Okay. All right. We're on. So, welcome to the last session of Lucene Solar Revolution. I'm glad you made it to this room. So this is a talk on rebuilding Solar 6 examples layer by layer. We actually gonna do um, a couple of different things that together add up to rebuilding the examples, but I'm sure you won't be disappointed. My name is Alexander Rafalovich. I'm a software developer with more than 20 years of experience. I don't actually wanna count how many. It's probably a lot more than that by now. Uh, but those three years included me doing the job as a senior tech support with BA WebLogic, which kind of gave me a slightly different perspective. I'm a lot more beginner user oriented sort of support queries and so on. Uh, so the role I choose for myself, I'm solar popularizer. And um, as part of that, I've published a book on that a while ago. It's a little out of date. Um, but if you um, join my mailing list in the archive, I have a link to get it for free. So don't buy it. You can get it for free completely. Uh, in August 2016, I was made a committer, which was a complete surprise to me. And I'm very happy about that. And my past, pre and present solar focus is uh, onboarding, usability, tooling, information sharing, all these kind of things. So this fits into my focus of interest. And you know, this is my third presentation at uh, uh, Revolution to try to sort of push that agenda. Okay, so we're talking about examples. So uh, the examples in solar kind of suffer from a catch-22 problem. Search is a surprisingly complex expertise. It seems kind of easy to start with it, and then you try to do one more thing, and it suddenly becomes super, super complex, and you don't even know what you understood before. You, you sort of get back into like, I don't know what I'm doing. And solar is a particularly complex product. It's, it's very wide. It's got a lot of features for a lot of different target audiences and everything. It's also very deep. Like even if you take one particular feature and you start drilling into it, it's, it takes quite a lot of effort to understand every single possibility it offers and every single advantage how to use it. Um, and also uh, it's, it's product with a lot of history. So it's history rich, it's got legacy aspects of it, it's got you know, remainders of the old implementations and so on. And just as solar is complex, so are the examples, at least in the current iteration. So, fast on the seat belts, we're gonna go fast, and we're gonna do the following things. We're gonna review all of the solar 6.2 examples that are shipped with it out of the box. It's more than you can think, I sus suspect. We're gonna have a look at a very small one, like we're gonna make one from scratch. You're gonna see what a smallest example actually looks like, just to give you perspective. And then we're gonna take a real shipped example and we're gonna deconstruct it. So we're not gonna rebuild it, we're gonna <coughs> deconstruct it. And in all honesty, I fully expect at least some of you to get lost several times along the way and hopefully find your way back. But don't worry. At the end, I will give you a way forward even if you get completely lost, okay? And whatever happens, I believe it will be very educational. So let's start with a very, very basic question. How many examples solar does actually ship out of the box? Okay, well, if you download latest solar and you look at the readme file and you follow the instruction, it says, okay, run it with E-flag dash e flag, and it will tell you the examples it comes with. So we get four here. We get cloud, tech products, DIH, and schemaless. Does this look familiar to people? Yeah, all right, so let's look at those four to start from. Let's understand what those four examples actually mean. And we start from tech products. Uh, that used to be collection one, right? That should be familiar to many people. And when you run that, the solar home, which is where all the config and data and all the rest of the files will be, it will be created and it will be in the examples tech products solar. If you, once you shut it down, you can start it again explicitly by doing start dash s and pointing to that particular URL. Okay, the actual core, the tech products core is, is further down, one more down the path, as you can see. Okay, now I said this core is created for you. So different from collection one, it comes from somewhere. And where it comes from, it comes from that particular obscure location, which is server solar config set, 
sample tech products config. That's a bootstrapping configuration for that example. Now, I just want to point out that even though it says config set in a directory, it's not a config set. Uh, it doesn't mean what they think it means. And it has a historical reason why it's that way. But just don't confuse it. When you look in documentation, if you see config set, that's different. This gets copied um, into the example. Because it gets copied, you can rebuild it. So you can just blow away that directory, do it again. And that example comes with its own data. It's got a bunch of XML files, which because it used to be collection one, it's a bit of a motley crew. It's a bit of everything get thrown into the core. And that's a command of how you do that, uh, the bin post. OK, schemaless example. So that goes into example schemaless solar. Actual core is called getting started under that. The source configuration is in the same parent directory as uh, tech products one called data driven schema config. That's actually the base configuration you get when you don't say what configuration you want when you create a core. So that's your default configuration. So when you say bin solo create dash c new core, if you don't give an explicit one, that's what you get. Okay, so that's useful to know. Doesn't have data it's, uh, of itself, but it can take nearly anything. Now it's called schemaless. So what's actually schemaless mode, okay? So you probably heard schemaless mode being banged around. So what is it? Well, it's kind of a solar's attempt to, to guess what you mean when you throw the data at the solar. And it ought to guess as field, field types, but it does it based on first content occurrence, which is very important if your data is not absolutely squeaky clean. Because if it sees something that looks like a number, but it was actually a string, the second time it sees something else that looks like a string, it will complain because it created, you gave you number field. So that's something to keep in mind. So these are, um, it can create explicit field definitions for booleans, dates, numbers, and strings. Not text, strings. And it's always multi-valued because when it sees the data first time, it doesn't know if the next time it's gonna be multi-valued. So again, it tries to avoid you getting blowing up. And you can configure it. If you look for the update request process chain in soloconfig.xml, you will see it, okay? Importantly, it rewrites managed schema. So with Solar 6, all the schema, we no longer have schema.xml. Obviously, we still support it if you enable it. But we now have something called managed schema, and Solar can change that. And the first time that schema gets, re, gets updated, Solar will rewrite that file from scratch. All the comments are gone. It gets shrunk down to just pure XML, OK? And the way the schemaless works, because it creates a definition of the field explicitly, it also has a copy field that gets copied to underscore text underscore, and that's what you're actually searching. Okay, so what's the difference? You can throw the same set of files you threw at tech products, the star.xml, to schemaless. And you get slightly different results. So if you look there, the tech products are in red, the schemaless is in blue, you can see if you get like strings in tech products, you had the name hard coded. In schemaless, it got created automatically. It's still a string, but in schemaless, it's multi valued because, again, it doesn't know if it's going to be multi valued later. Numbers got picked up as numbers. They are now multi valued. There is no special treatment in tech products. There is like a copy field that says the price is actually a special price field and it copies into the price field. Schemaless knows nothing about that. It just keeps it. Same with stock, it's Boolean, but now in brackets. Okay, so that's schemaless. What do we have next? Cloud. Let's look at the cloud. Okay, cloud example is highly configurable. If you run it, it's gonna ask you like four or five different questions, unless you use dash 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 no prompt, which is an easy way to just get it right, running if you wanna test something quickly. Um, the solar home, it creates a bunch of solar homes all in that structure. And you have a choice of a source configuration of three different things, basic config, data-driven schema configs, and sample tech products config, with the default being data-driven schema configs, which is what schemaless example was on, okay? You can rebuild it, you just blow away the cloud directory, run it again, and it recreates it with possibly new configuration. Um, it demonstrates config API, which is config overlay.json. If you've never heard of that file, 
and this is a good one to run and then see what happens, like see what that file does and what it contains and how it got there. So that's a new feature in Solar. Okay, data import handler, the last one of the four. Well, there is a bit of a trick actually. So data import handler is a, it's a legacy thing, right? But people still use it, it's still needed, it's still kicking. It's Solar Home is example, example DIH Solar. And it has five different cores. It's not actually one example, it's five different examples. So you just boot it all together with one solar server instance, okay? And uh, the first one is DB, demonstrate database import. And solar actually comes with a tiny little in-memory HSSQL DB database, which contains some of the data from tech products example that gets loaded in. Uh, has a solar core, which imports from another sol solar instance and actually uses a DB core for its source, so they're kind of codependent. Has a mail example, which shows how to import mail. I can get it to import from my Gmail account, but it takes a bit of effort, so you need to configure it. Uh, has sticker example for each text import, um, which we actually ship a PDF, very, very small, pretty much empty PDF for that. And has a RSS example, which doesn't work because it used to use slash dot and slash dot kept changing their mind what their um, format should look like and we kind of gave up trying to follow it. So that example may go away, may get rewritten, something's gonna happen to it, but don't bother looking at it right now. It's broken in more than three different ways kind of thing. So now importantly, you cannot rebuild that example, okay? Because it's a legacy setup, it's not coming from any config, it leaves where the config is, you delete the directory, it's gone, okay? So you have to get it back from a, you know, from the source, distribu from a distribution. But you can empty it, so you can just issue a delete query and, you know, repopulate it again. All right, so if you thought we were done with the examples, no, we are like halfway. So what happens if you start solar without anything? So you go bin solar start. Well, there is actually a home for it. It's called bin server solar. There is a solar.xml uh, there. There is configuration there. Doesn't have any cores, but you can create some explicitly. So you use bin solar create, create with a core name and you pass the configuration or you use the default one. You can use like a more direct uh, core admin um, API. Or if you somehow got that server into cloud mode, which is, it's not by default, but if you got it, then you can use a collection API. Okay. So you saw, you saw when we bootstarted the cloud that there was another config we didn't talk about called basic configs. So it was available for cloud example and you also use it when you do explicit creation, you can give it as a name. It's got schemaless mode configured in the file but it's not enabled. And the reason I brought it up is because basic config is supposed to be minimal solar configuration but you know, the managed schema is 1000 something lines and soliconfig.xml is 14, 1,484 lines, which is the reason I'm doing this presentation because I think that's kind of somewhat disgraceful that our basic example is that big when it doesn't have to be, okay? But we'll get back to that very soon. Um, okay, are we done? You think we're done? No, okay. Files example. It's specifically tuned for file indexing and demonstrating the features you could do with rich text processing, extracting, and so on. Um, it uses augmented schemaless mode and it does some language detection and content, content type guessing and a bunch of other things. It's got a custom slash browse endpoint. So if you, if you use the slash browse endpoint in the previous versions of Solar, uh, we still have that, but this one is configured differently. So you can hit it and see, you know, the differences and interesting things. Uh, the source configuration is under the example directory, so not under the server directory. So that's why it's a little hidden. But it comes with a readme file, which explains everything you need to know, right? And you can bring your own data. So it actually suggests. And that's what the browse handler looks like. So as you can see, it's quite a bit different. Have you done with examples? No. <laughs> Films example, it's schemaless. It's based on data-driven schema config on the default one. Um, but it uses schema API to add customs fields before the schemaless mode gets triggered to give it more fine tuning kind of thing and then uses schemaless for the rest of the fields. It comes with its own data. 
1100 film records, which is kind of awesome. It's, it's, it's a bigger chunk of the data. You can play with that. It's got lots of interesting features and so on. Uh, and it uses velocity, so slash browse handler. It uses schema API and it uses request parameters API. And it also comes with a readme file. And actually it comes with a script inside the readme file so you could just copy and paste and run the whole thing. Okay, we are done with the examples, right? 10, depending how you count. So that was the good news, right? Everyone's happy, good news. Many examples, easy to get one running, some come with data, some you can throw your own data at, lots of comments. This is the bad news. Our examples have a lot of support files. They have lots of types. You know, you can see in, in red it's a maximum number and in green it's a minimum number kind of thing. And Tikri example is um, a bit of a challenged one. So it shows the minimal numbers, but I would kind of ignore that example as a representative sample of what the smallest configuration should look like. So we're looking at a large number. And uh, the only reason the film's example is like 481 lines as opposed to 1100 is because if you remember, I said the comments get stripped on the first use. And the film's example gets boot bootstrapped from the data-driven schema and then we modify it and push, the, push some data in it. So that's 481 non-commented lines as opposed to 1,000 commented lines. So yeah, so it's quite a lot, okay? And the solo config files are just large. So, okay. Now, for the geeks in the audience, those who wants to repeat that on their own configs, this is the command I use to get some of these numbers. So it's a sort of old program that's still around and it's really, I use it for a lot of things. And it's basically XSLT with a command line interface and it's really good to process XML files. So, okay. Now, why, why is this like that? Why, why is it like that? Like, why do we have that sort of state of current example affair? And, and you have to understand that many examples predate Solar Reference Guide, right? Wiki was there, but the Reference Guide is, is, is comparatively a recent thing, right? So, so there was no that original source. Uh, so the examples were designed so you could grab through the things and say, uh, is there anything about multi-value? Then you just grab for multi-value and then it comes back and it's all commented out or it shows that's what default would look like, but it's all there. So, you know, for the old Unix geeks, it was heaven, but we now have solar reference guide and so on. And each example became a bit of a kitchen sink, you know, but the end result is, and I um, was born in Russia, so I could tell this joke in original Russian, but, for the most of the audience, it's basically too much of a good thing is also a bad thing. You know, there are externalities of everything. So, but it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Let's have a look at the small one, at the small example, okay? Okay, that's half of a schema. We have one dynamic field which matches everything. Star, it's multi-valued, it's a string, it's indexed, it's stored, it's got everything. I'm not bothering with doc values right here because this is a demo, but you could put doc values in there, possibly, possibly. And then you have one more field, which is a text, which is the one you will actually search. So that gets split and so on. And then you copy everything from star into that field. And the second half is just two field definitions, field type definitions. And you could see I've got a pretty simple definition for the um, text. It just splits it on their, um, on the letters, which is a particular sort of regular expression, and it lowercases that, and it's multi-valued, so it all works. And that's a solo config.xml to match that. The minimal solo config.xml, for those who didn't know, needs to have one line in it. I mean, apart from the config brackets. It needs to have Lucene match version. That's all. Everything else is optional, configuration, tuning, everything else. So if in doubt, you could strip it down. If you're running solar cloud, there is a couple more things, okay? But in this case, I wanted to enable search. 
So I actually say that text is my default field. I've provided that. So that blew it up like five times now. It's bigger, okay? Still fits on one screen though. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that small example. All right, well, we create it. We pass that configuration as a parameter. And we post exactly the same files we used for the tech product example for our old collection one. And guess what? It still works. Still works. Loads it in, 32 documents, no problem. And you can search it. That's probably a little small for you people, but I'm searching on a lowercase iPod, it matches, it does faceting, it brings the results back, okay? So the minimal example could be very minimal, and it would work. That's the power of solar. Lots of things are optional, lots of features go very deep, and so on. Some things obviously won't work, right? So I haven't defined a unique key, right? I didn't even have a field that was called ID. It will match, it will populate, but it's not unique. So no way to update the documents, no solar cloud, you know, a couple of other things that rely on uniqueness of documents will not work, and so on. No underscore version underscore, so solar cloud will not work again. Everything is multi-valued, so sorting doesn't work, right? Copy fields start to text means you don't have any meaningful relevancy and you don't have any specialized analysis chain processing. However, if you didn't modify your, um, the schema when you deployed your solar instance, you might be having the same problem as well. If you're searching against underscore text underscore by default, which is how a lot of schema configured, you're gonna have relevancy issues as well. So this is just make it very stark to realize what's happening. Okay, so we looked at the examples and we looked at what very small example could look like. Now let's deconstruct a real example. We're gonna deconstruct the films example, okay? So um, this is basically a summary of what the readme file tells you. In very high level, we create it, we, um, um, Give some, we give specific fields, we give specific definition to a couple of fields, and then we index, and there are three different formats to index from, so to demonstrate same data in three different ways. So you can see how it's represented, and uh, you can see when you pass, parse a CSV format versus generic JSON, not solo update JSON, generic one, versus solo XML, you can see how the same data is represented in different ways. Then we search for Batman, that's what the readme file suggested, and then we use a browse endpoint and we search for Batman and we enable highlighting. Uh, again, that's all following the readme. So that's our kind of reference um, behavior. That's our reference functionality and we're gonna see how far we can strip the examples and still keep that, okay? So just to show it for those who don't know what it should look like, that's a browse interface. I put Batman in, it, it finds it, it highlights it, okay? All right. Let's do it. Initial stats for this score. Okay, we have 41 TXT files, we have three XML files, we have one JSON file, and we have one managed schema file, which is actually XML, but we didn't give it an extension. I don't know why, that's how it is. Um, and then we also have a second metric, which is actually how big those files are, and we're gonna look at managed schema, solo config.xml, and just for the reference, params.json, which is additional parameters on top of config.xml. Okay, so let's start from the easy things. Okay, we already removed the comments from the manage schema, right? It did it automatically when, we, when it created new fields. Let's do the same thing for config.xml. We have to do it explicitly. That's a command to do that, right? I'm using the same XML command you saw before, XML starlet. Okay, it just said it's set in place, deletes the comments, you get a new file. Any guesses how much we dropped from 1,482 down to 278 lines left? The rest is comments. Default comment, comments on defaults, comments on what to do, what not to do, comments on alternatives and so on. But you know, it's a good start, okay? We, we, we dropped 1,100 lines. So we can actually read that file now, okay? Okay, let's keep going. So, what are we gonna clean? Okay, well we have eight explicit fields and 73 dynamic fields. 
71 types, one copy field. Okay, let's start from dynamic fields, right? Okay, how do we know what we're using or not? Well, dynamic fields don't modify the schema, right, when you match against them. The schema, like that's why you could use them in, you know, three point whatever, four point whatever, when the schema.xml was fixed. Dynamics, it matches dynamic skills, it populates the actual index, but the schema does not change. So you cannot look in a schema, but you can look in a UI. In a UI, it will show you, right? So you can see here address underscore s is showing up in the drop down in the admin UI uh, schema tab. And then at the bottom you have generic definitions. All right, so that's from a different schema. Now let's look at our schema, at our managed core. Mm, none. We are not using any dynamic fields in the films example. There, there is a star thing in there, but that's because it's a copy field instruction star to, to text. So we can actually remove all of them. We can remove all dynamic fields. We're not using them. Okay, they're not contributing to our use case, to our example. That's a command to do it. Okay, bam. We are down to 409 lines. We're doing well. What's next? Okay, we have 71 types. How many of them are we using? Well, let's run a query to find out how many of them are we using in managed schema, and then look in solo XML, solo config.xml and sort of manually search for the field names and see what else it adds, okay? We got five in, in the schema and we got four, four more in solo config, we got nine altogether. So 62 can go. We are down to 34 lines. That's not bad, right? We're doing pretty well. Down from, I don't wanna remember how many. Okay, let's pause here. Let's see what happens next. Support files. Maybe we don't need some of them anymore. All right, um, click. All right, uh, inside the lang directory, so we have a conf directory and inside of that there is a lang directory and there are language specific files supporting stuff. Uh, there is uh, 30 files that are stop words for different languages and four files that are contractions for different languages and then there is another like couple of files, four files. All right, let's check for usage. So we just grab for that pattern in our managed schema and solo config.xml, we grab for the other one, we get no matches. We just deleted them. We got rid of the dynamic fields. We got rid of the type supporting dynamic fields. We weren't using any of that stuff, right? We were just importing English language field names with some associated data. Uh, we can delete the whole lang directory. <laughs> Bam, it's gone, right? And you can look at um, the files inside config directory and you can get rid of two more files. So what's our stats look like now? We're down to two text files, two XML files. We're doing pretty well. Okay, let's go back to manage schema for a second. There's a couple of little things more we can do. Let's have a look at the actual field usage, right? Okay, you probably cannot read that. This is the small multiples of their, uh, of their uh, admin UI screen, and you can load the terms for each field individually. And I've basically gone through, and you can see at the bottom right sort of is an area where it shows you the terms that are actually in the index. And all of them are fine except the one on the top right. Hmm, wonder what that is. It's underscore root underscore. I see some heads are nodding, right. Okay, so the next slide will not be a surprise to you guys. But it's a bit of a mystery. In the original schema, there is no explanation why we have this underscore root underscore field. In documentation, it actually says so. It's used for nested documents. To support nested documents, schema must include index not stored field root, la 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 la. You want a joke? Okay. The only reason the commutation has that is because I was preparing the slides and the commutation didn't have anything, so I went and put it in. You know, good thing when commuters dog food their <laughs> material. So that's my, co that's my language still. Um, but we are not using nested documents. Actually, Solar doesn't ship with any nested documents example. If you wanted one, you had to go to the presentation this morning. So, okay, we can remove root. It's one field 
one line difference. But it's kind of important because you were eight fields, now you're down to seven fields. You know. All right, let's look at the text general type. Okay, I don't know how many people actually like stay awake at the night reading the definition of the analyzers. Um, eh, you know, it happens. <laughs> but here we have a text general, general, okay? We'll come back to that. And it has a split definition, it has an index definition, query definition, because during the query, we're doing the same thing as we're doing during the index, but we also have synonyms processing. Um, and both of those sites have some stop words handling. Okay, so we have two support files, stop words and, and, and synonyms, and then a couple of other things. Well, let's look at those two files, right? <laughs> Giggles from the general audience. <laughs> stop words .txt is actually empty, right? I mean, it's got comments in it, but comments don't do anything, so it actually doesn't define any stop words. In, in, in the uh, synonyms files, is actually the one from tech products example and it's got some junk in it. So it doesn't apply to our film's example. It's, it's, you, know, you need to modify both of those to make a difference to what you're doing. You need to tune those things, okay? And um, the, here is a funny thing about stop words. Um, if you have no file, it will use a default list. But the default list is English. But Soli is not English. Soli is you know, international, we, we, equal opportunity thing. So the general definition of the file is actually explicitly empty so you don't get the English. So you get nothing, okay? If you wanted to use the English in the lang directory, there was English file, text underscore en, which you could use as a base and then add a couple of on, on your own things and so on. But we didn't use that because that was a different type, so we deleted it back in the past. You can copy it back if you want and you know, substitute the files or whatever. In the meanwhile, uh, we're not using that. Right? That particular part of definition is not used. And you can confirm that by going back into admin UI. You see the pattern, right? <laughs> Use admin UI. And we can check and we can see the stop words right there. Right? That's actually the most frequent stop words in that field. It's a name field in this particular case. So if you're not using the stop words and we're not using synonyms, then the index definition and the query definition are actually identical and not doing anything so we can remove those things and we can get down to this, right? Tokenize, lowercase. Same indexing, same query, right? And we, we can also delete the two files that weren't particularly useful. Now, um, I just wanted to mention at this point that both stop words and synonyms in this example use text configuration files. But the latest version of Sola actually has rest managed examples rest managed um, uh, elements to, to manage these things. So you can config, configure them with an API. So for those who are like into like, you know, rest oriented stuff, look at their uh, tech products configuration which ships with that. So it, it has example of that. And that puts a couple more files in the config directory and all that stuff. Okay. What are we up to now? Okay, we dropped managed schema more down to 26 lines. You could nearly memorize these things now. Let's see how far we got so far. This is the original stats versus where we are now. Okay. Let's go to the soloconfig.xml. Soloconfig.xml is more complex than managed schema. It's got heterogeneous sections. It's got nested definitions. It's got alternative implementation. And also remember or learn, for those of you who haven't migrated yet, you have two additional files now which support soloconfig.xml and kind of override and augment it. So that's config overlay.json and params.json. I'm not gonna explain them, I'm just gonna tell you they exist. And we use params.json in here, we use config overlay.json in a cloud example. You can Google both of those or you can search for both of those in a reference documentation and you'll, you'll get another presentation worth on what those things are how to use them. But we do use them in shipped examples just in different places. All right, so how are we gonna approach config.xml? Mm, there has to be a way. Well, the way I approach it, I said let's look at the feature count. Let's look at the most highest level XML elements and see how many of them we get. 
And we got 11 request handlers, eight leap statements, five search components, three query response writers. You know, like the whole Christmas tree kind of thing. Okay? The other way to look at that is to look at the line counts. Okay? And we have one update request processor chain, which is like 55 lines long. That, that, that's big. Okay? Some of you may know what that, that thing actually is, but if not, we'll get to it in a second. And then you have a highlight component, and then you have query and spell check and a bunch of other things. And I haven't shown you the full list. It just drops down to the bottom. It's like, you know, diminishing returns. You have enough slides ahead of you. Now, remember, this works, <laughs> right? So that works, that works. We can probably meet somewhere in the middle. Though possibly not all the way down in, in this presentation, but we'll see how far we get. I haven't seen the sign yet. Okay, so the first one, and a known fields to the schema. Well, that's actually the schemaless mode. That's what makes the schemaless mode work, okay? Um, it's generic, but it's fully configurable. You can muck things around. Um, but r remember, it's not perfect. If we had to manually pre-add fields for this example, it's kind of for development. You want to put that in production, it's on your head. Okay, and it has some normalization side effects. Um, like it normalizes the date. So if you rip it out thinking you, you already augmented your schema, it, it will stop working. The import will stop working because it normalizes the dates into ISO format as part of its processing chain. Ask me how I found out. I was going to rip it out for this demonstration. Um, so we cannot remove it in this example. You can by creating an alternative one and putting the date processing element by itself so it normalizes the dates but doesn't do anything else. You know, home exercise. All right, leave it in. Next one is highlighter though. That's about half of that on the left. But the point is it's got fragmenters, encoders, frag list builders, fragment builders, boundary scanners, like lots of different things. It's quite complex. I mean, reading through that gives you a headache. Reading through it second time gives you a bigger headache. However, the truth, the truth. The highlighter search component is in default stack. You may remember faceting, highlighting, searching, um, two other things, whatever they were, more like this. I, I don't have the slide for that. But it's in default stack. If it's in default stack, you saw the default, it has to work. So there is a default implementation that, you know, you have when you're not having an implementation, you know, like the drink, right? So the parameters in here are a mix of the stand, and also the parameters in here are a mix of standard highlighter and alternative highlighter, which is a fast vector highlighter, right? But you cannot use a fast vector version as schema fields are missing term vectors. Like you have to add a couple more fields in your schema definition to enable the features required for the fast highlighter to work. Okay, so you don't need those parameters. And you don't need the other ones because they're default. So they were just to show you what the defaults were. Because remember, we, we didn't have reference guide when we did that section, and now we have the reference guide and we have APIs and, yeah. Oh yeah, you can just get rid of the whole section. Okay, got rid of the whole section. Okay, it still works. I'm, I'm not showing it here, but you can still start from that config, you can still boot it, you can still push the files into it, you can still search the browse, highlight, everything works. Okay, what else do we have there? Uh, not on default stack, so not in that one of those six. Spell check term, term vector elevator. They all have dedicated request handlers to make them work, to enable them. They don't show up in the search, they don't show up in the browse, nothing. They just sit there. It's kind of inception. You have an example within an example. You have to trigger it in a separate request handler to actually get it to work. Uh, so you can just delete them. You're not using them. If you want them, you know, it's you can get them later. They're not contributing to your current schema to our use case, okay? Uh, you can also delete the elevate.xml, which was like the other file left over that was contributing to that. All right, we're down to 163 lines in soloconfig.xml. All right, there is more that can be taken out. You can take out the query section because you have to tune it anyway. It's not tuned. You can get rid of update handler, which does the commits. And then you will still have the commits, but you will lose smart commits, you know, which you need to think whether they make sense for you anyway. You can get rid of JMX unless you're running JMX, in which case you would know that and you would need to configure that element, you know, but it's one line. And you definitely want to get rid of enable remote streaming. In fact, go back to your production config.xml and check if you have remote 
enable remote streaming there. Uh, just talk to someone who did. And if you do, check the comment just before it that says don't put it into production. So remove that. Just, just, just do. <laughs> it's in there. It's in comment, but it was line 700, right? So I don't know if you read to line 700 when you were reading this all config.xml that you put into production. But if you didn't, I'm just giving you a clue, right? There is one right there. So just search for that in your production schema. But for this example, we need to keep velocity, browse, search, support, a couple of other things. So we're not going to go into that. We're pretty much done, OK? I'm not going to teach you anymore, except I'm going to tell you what the next step is, OK? Because we were not done, because I hope you were still interested, and because I, th I hope you realize that there is a lot, of, a lot to learn, and that even understanding examples is not a simple thing. So here's what happens next. I am organizing a solo example reading group, which means we're going to take an example, and we're going to discuss it. And we're going to talk about tooling around that, like which tools, like the ones I showed you, maybe more of those, there are a couple more you could use, OK? And there are no stupid questions, as in any question you ask will not be considered stupid. You can ask the most basic questions, and hopefully somebody else will answer it. And if they don't, I will. And if I can't, I will research it, and I will give you an answer. So you can register. It starts in November. So TikTok. OK, sorry, the video viewers. Um, maybe there is a second version of that. But it starts in November. That's a URL. Go register. It's like a short form. You just put your email. You say which example you prefer. And I get back to you later. You can join my mailing list. You can look at my website if you haven't. But you can join the mailing list there. I will send a link to the presentation source to my mailing list. So you could copy and paste the commands from there. If you don't care about that, the presentation itself will be up on uh, SlideShare. And Lucidworks will put it up with a video or whatever. It's your choice. But my mailing list is specifically for beginners you know, and people who realize there is more to learn. So it's kind of good. Uh, there is a bunch of different projects. And we're done.